quick video on testing a tuned circuit. Here I've got seven turns of enameled copper wire in parallel with a 56 picofarad fixed capacitor. This is the basic setup. I've got a wide range receiver. In this case I'm using my FT817. That has a couple of turns of wire connected to one of the antenna connections. Here's the tuned circuit under test and I'm applying broadband RF noise from an antenna. It's got to be a broadband antenna, can't be something narrowband like a magnetic loop or trap dipole, etc. If you don't have an antenna, you could use something else like an RF white noise generator. Anyway, that's just coupled through a single turn of wire. You can see a quick lash up here. Three turns connected to the antenna connection on the FT817. That's in parallel with a loop. The distance is about three centimeters and that's connected to the RF coming in. The object of the experiment will be to put the unknown tuned circuit in between the two and at frequencies where the tuned circuit is resonant at or near there will be a large increase in the noise level as heard by the receiver. Because at the moment it's very loose coupling between the RF coming in from the antenna and the receiver but when we put the tuned circuit in provided it's resonant at the right frequency or near enough the coupling becomes much tighter. So just as an experiment we just put it in like that and you can hear the increase in RF noise. Now it is important that the turns are parallel to one another. Both coupling loops, you can see there are parallel, as is the unknown inductor. When we move it by 90 degrees like that, you can see there's almost no effect. But when we turn the turns like that, there's a large effect. Anyway, we'll just tune the receiver from, let's say, around 42 megahertz up to around 50 to see if we can identify where the inductor is resonant at. While we do this test, we have the inductor in like that. And that's 10 meters active. We have the inductor in. You can't see it, but you'll just have to take my word for it. And we're around 41 megahertz. We'll tune up. gradually hear an increase in the noise as we tune up. And definitely at 47 megahertz there's an increase. I'll just take the inductor out. As you can hear the noise disappears. And 48 megahertz. And then, at 49 megahertz, and above 50 megahertz, you can hardly hear anything and there's very little difference when the inductor is in or not. So you can be quite confident that the tuned circuit is resonant around 48 megahertz, just outside the 6 meter band. That could be useful if you're making a, say a trap dipole. It's a good idea often with trap antennas for the trap to be a little bit outside the amateur band. That lessons loss. There's some information about that on WHAI's website.
we'll just go over to the computer and do a calculation and see if we can measure the inductance. We can use an online calculator or you can use formulas and we know the capacitor is 56 picofarads so we can work out the inductance from that. Entered 48 and 56 in this LC resonance calculator and we get 196 nanohenry. That's a shade under 0.2 of a microhenry. If we look at this air core inductor calculator, put in some numbers. The diameter is about 10 millimeter, length about 20 millimeter, six turns, and we get 145 nanohenry, a little bit lower than expected. And you could just compress the turns to increase the inductance or pull them out a little bit to decrease the inductance. The result of these experiments has been the construction of two traps. These will be used for a trap dipole, covering 10 and 6 metres. If you have a nano VNA or similar, this is something else you can do. Just make up a little coil of three turns or so. I've got it connected to a BNC via several adapters and just put your coil under test right near it. The turns should be parallel and you'll see a big dip where the resonant frequency is.